God has gone up with a shout, and the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to our service in Ascension Tide, as we reflect on the glorious ascension of our Lord Jesus and we pray for the sending of the Holy Spirit on the church once again at Pentecost. Welcome wherever you are around St Cross, across the city of Winchester or further afield. And as we begin our worship, we sing together our first hymn led by our virtual choir, The Head That Once Was Crowned With Thorns is crowned with glory now. of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ with us, let us call to mind our sins. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, 
and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now Claudia is going to read our first two readings from Scripture. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the Apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place, to place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled in the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, 
so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen and establish you. To him be the power for ever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I wonder what we make of the Apostles' question to Jesus. Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? One way of taking the disciples' question is that they're being a bit naive and they don't really understand God's kingdom at all. And what their question means is that they're thinking that the resurrection means Jesus is going to summon a great earthly army, perhaps with a heavenly army as well, and the Romans are going to get kicked out of Judea at last. And of course, that doesn't happen. I don't think that's right. I think the disciples are really onto something in their question whether this is the time that the kingdom is restored. They're right in the sense that the kingdom is restored through the whole earthly ministry of Jesus, through his triumphant death and resurrection, and now his ascension and soon the giving of the Holy Spirit. The kingdom is restored. But the triumph 
and the kingship, as I think the disciples understand, is not a victory of physical power and strength, of being able to hurt your enemies while keeping safe yourself. No, this is a kingship of spiritual power, a triumph of good over evil. It's a triumph of being willing to suffer and even die for the sake of others. A triumph of bearing burdens graciously. A triumph of forgiving those who harm us, for they know not what they do. And that is the triumph which we are called to share in. We must suffer with our Lord below, as we will reign with him above. There will be fiery ordeal, St Peter says vividly. Do not be surprised. But even as we suffer, God calls us to his eternal glory in Christ. And our Gospel reading supports this because, of course, this passage is quite a long way back in the story. It is just before Jesus goes with his disciples to Gethsemane to be betrayed and arrested. The hour has come, Jesus says, glorify your son since you have given him authority over all people. Yes, and the kind of glory and the kind of authority we are talking about are the kind which involve paying the price of the sins of the whole of the human race so that we may be restored to God. The ascension is a coronation for sure. But it does not cancel the earlier coronation with the crown of thorns. Instead, it fulfills it. It brings that earlier coronation to the only ending it can possibly deserve. That Jesus, having risen, will be enthroned in heavenly splendour so that he can be our strong defender. We are all suffering now, aren't we? All in different ways, from children to the parents of school-aged children to those shielding for months at a time from financial anxieties, from the pain of separation from our loved ones, from the disruption of routines and from the fear that things and people we love will be lost forever because of this crisis. And I'm sorry I cannot promise you that in future, as Christians, you will not suffer or will not suffer loss. But I can tell you that your sufferings are not for nothing. For they are a sharing in the sufferings of Christ. And born graciously, they are an essential part of life with Christ, which will bring us through suffering and even death to the glorious joy of resurrection and to heavenly life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Now I invite you to join me in saying the creed as we profess our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now in our prayers of intercession, the response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have exalted your Son, Christ Jesus, to your right hand and made him the head over all things for his body, the Church. Hear us as we pray for your Church throughout the world, for our parish of St Faith, for the hospital of St Cross, for all the churches in Winchester, and in our diocese, and for Bishop Cranmer and our companion Link Diocese, Mohabura, in Uganda. Lord, in your mercy, in hear our Lord. prayer. Lord God Almighty, the Ancient of Days, you have given your Son all authority in heaven and on earth. Hear us. As we pray for the world he came to redeem, we pray especially for the leaders of the nations, for the leaders of health and social care services. Grant that all people may come to know, even in this time, the things that make for peace and may strive for the reconciliation of your kingdom of justice and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our Redeemer, whose Son ever lives to make intercession for us, hear us as we pray for those in any kind of need. For those sick with the coronavirus or with other conditions. For those who are anxious, fearful or depressed. And for the bereaved. May Jesus, who has borne our infirmities, strengthen and heal them, that they may find grace to help in time of need and the joy of his salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, whose Son has borne our humanity into the heavenly realms, 
and gone before us to prepare a place for us. Hear us as we remember before you those whose earthly sojourn is over and whose life is now hidden in him with you, remembering especially the recently departed and our own departed relatives and friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now I invite you to share with me and with each other a virtual peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us share with each other the peace of God. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for all things in heaven and on earth come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is our great high priest, who has entered once for all into the heavenly sanctuary, evermore to pour upon your church the grace and comfort of your Holy Spirit, he is the one who has gone before us, who calls us to be united in prayer, as were his disciples in the upper room, while they awaited his promised gift, the life-giving spirit of Pentecost. Therefore all creation yearns with eager longing, as angels and archangels sing the endless hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and, taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So 
So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St Faith and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And I invite you now to join in saying together the word that Jesus himself has taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I now invite you to join as we sing our second hymn led by our virtual choir.
This week we have been reflecting on the theme of the Ascension and we have been working with different kinds of bubbles in our bubble challenge and here's some of the work that uh, people have been doing. work. Thank you very much to everyone who has shared it with us. Before uh, I pray for God's blessing, I'll give three notices. The first is to say if you are interested in helping to make mask extenders which go behind the heads of the nurses and other NHS and care workers to um, protect their ears when they're wearing their PPE, then we have circulated the pattern for making mask extenders. If you have any questions about it, please get in touch with Mel uh, or with me. Secondly, uh, each evening, uh, this evening and up to Saturday, we will be having a service of Compline at half past eight in the evening as part of the traditional period of prayer between Ascension and Pentecost. And finally, just to share the good news that for, uh, through our Parish Resilience Fund and Youth Fund Appeal, we have raised just over £19,000 towards our £20,000 target. So thank you to uh, everyone who has uh, donated generously and thanks to all those uh, who I know are still uh, considering uh, helping us. So now I will pray for God's blessing on us. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.